Welcome back, and this is gonna be how to use math notes in geometry notes. So if you haven't already seen the first three parts of my course on geometry notes for beginners, go ahead and check that out. But this is gonna be part four. We're gonna be looking at math notes. Now, we won't be looking at vector math notes today, just specifically just these math notes here. Um, and they're gonna be something you use a lot. So it's a lot simpler than you think. For example, you can see over here, we have a value of three and a value of two. And they're going into this math note and it's set to multiply and it's doing exactly what you think. It's taking A and B and combining them. And the output here, the value is six because three multiplied by two is six. It really is that simple. And then you've got things like subtract and the things you would have learned in primary school. Um, so it's a lot simpler than you might think. And I'm gonna show you how to isolate the Y and the X and the Z when you're working with the transform geometry. And that's also gonna be using some math nodes so we can separate different um, parts of the X, Y, and Z components. And then we'll be looking at how we can use it to kind of like offset some donuts. So you only have to use, for example, one um, scale input and um, you can offset the scale of some of the other um, donuts here, for example. So, um, you know, it, I'll go step by step through it. There's a lot of good ways you can use the math nodes in Blender. And hopefully this um, kind of gives you a example you can mess around with and you can understand that a little bit better. So let's jump in to math nodes in geometry nodes. So let's start by selecting the default cube. We're going to go to our geometry nodes setup. And we're gonna now look at our math nodes. So just like we've done now in the previous parts, we're gonna go ahead with the object selected, create a new system. Let's just call it maths or maths, whatever you prefer to pluralize. Um, we're just gonna go now and look at some of the very basics. Okay, so we could use the cube as an input object, but I think it'd be more interesting if we just used um, a torus instead of the default cube. Now, if we actually come in here, and we go shift A search and type in torus, we can't get one and um, we could come over here in the scene and add one in, but I'm gonna show you a quick little trick. You can always select the default cube, tab into edit mode and just delete everything, right? We're still in edit mode and then go shift A and just add in a torus and then tab back out. And now this cube is a torus. So our input geometry, um, our input group is still giving us a torus, okay? So now let's look at some cool math stuff. So let's say, for example, we wanna go shift A, search, and let's just get a transform geometry. There we go, and place it on here. Now we've already looked at this node in previous parts, but essentially it's gonna allow us to come here and move our object around or rotate it and so on. So at the moment, right, um, there isn't, if we actually grab this translation and we drag it and type in value, it's just gonna add a value to each one of these um, transforms at X, Y, and Z. So if you look, it's moving in all of them at the same time by whatever value we do um, over here. So it's one of the ways we can isolate this is by building a little node package that's gonna allow us to do that. And it's gonna use some math nodes. Let's go shift A search. And the first math node we're gonna look at is a separate and a separate X, Y, and Z. We're gonna place it on here. So now we're telling Blender we wanna use one of these specifically. So let's take the X, okay? And at the moment it is the X. And when we come here now and drag this, even though it's the X input, it's still kind of um, doing what it did originally because we're only telling it that's the one we wanna use. But we need to actually go Shift A, search, and now get a combine, get a combine X, Y, and Z, and now place it over here. So now between these two math nodes over here, it's gonna go and separate the X. It's gonna go into the X, now we're using it, and now the combine is allowing us to come here and drag this value, and now, it will be exactly on the X. So now we can come here and for example, type in two meters. And now you can see that this torus is from its center point, it's moved two meters. So we can actually get our little measurement tool here and go from the middle to the middle of the torus. And we can see that's two meters. How cool is that? So now you kind of understand how this works. And what we can do is we can actually grab these two nodes over here and we can go control G or command G and then tab back out. And now we have this little node package that it'll, um, allows us to work on the X. In fact, we can press N over here to bring up our properties. Another cool thing you can do is go to node and then just give this node a label. So let's just go and just call it X and move. So it's moving or I guess, let's just say translate because it's actually translation. So X translation. So now we can come over here 
and drag and translate this on the X. And what we can do, we can actually grab this and go Shift D, make another one, bring it down. And let's click on this little number here to make it its own node. And now with this node here, let's just come and let's call it, for example, Y. And now we can quickly grab this one tab into here and let's just connect the Y to the Y and disconnect the X, tab back out. So now this will allow us, if we grab this value, plug it into the vector and plug this one into the translation. Now it's doing this on the Y translation. And now let's grab this Y, Shift D to duplicate, move that guy down. Click on this little number to make it its own and let's call this one the Z. And now we can just grab it, tab it in here and let's just connect the Z to the Z and disconnect the Y. And now we have these three little node packages that we've created. Uh, fun little things, let's just move these two and for now just work with the X. So I'm gonna plug the X translation into the translation here. And now I'm just gonna go ahead, holding control, I'm gonna right click and just disconnect this cable here. So now let's look at some math in a way that you'd understand it uh, a little bit more intuitively. So let's say for example, we take this value here and we want three meters, right? We can plug this value now into the X translation. So now we've moved up three meters, but we can also now go and go shift D to drag this value down. And let's say for example, we want um, three meters, but in a different way. So we can come here and make this for example, two meters over here. And in this example, we'll go, we want six. We actually want six to be the value that goes in here. At the moment, if you hover over here, you can see it's actually free. So we can go shift a search and get a math. Let's get a math node and place it on here. And now we can plug this value into here. And now it's adding three to two. So the output, if you actually hover over this value, you can see it shows five. So it's actually going three plus two, because this is an add, it's addition gives us a five. So now this has moved up five meters. So it's just how you learned in school. We can actually go and do other things like um, subtract. So now it's only moved up one meter because three minus two gives us one. If we hover over this value, we can see it's a float value of one. So it's just how you kind of learned at school. Very simple stuff. So let's move this up. We're gonna change this to a multiply. And then let's go shift D to duplicate this math node, place it on this cable. And now let's make this a subtract. And let's come here to this value and let's subtract three. So now there's two ways we can get to three. We can either directly plug three into this vector for three meters, or we can take this output and plug it in here. Now this seems like kind of a pointless way. Why, don't, why wouldn't we just take this one over here, the value three if we wanted three and just put it into there, right? In this case, it's pointless, but it's just to kind of show you how the math nodes work. And there are gonna be some situations where stuff like this is actually gonna be handy because you can um, offset things across the network using math nodes. Um, but this stuff we'll get into more later when we do like a full-blown project. But this is just kind of to let you see that these math nodes, right, are really just kind of like most of these things are things that you already know about intuitively. Like you wanna add two things together, you add. If you wanna subtract two values together, you subtract, divide, multiply. And then some of these things here are a bit more complicated. So these things allow you to do like um, greater than comparison. So for example, in the next part, I think we're gonna be looking at the index. So we might wanna say if a certain value is equal to this number, then you wanna compare it so it's the same number. Or you wanna say anything greater, for example, than five will be selected or anything less than two might be selected. So these are what we call comparisons and you'll understand them more in the next part. And then those of you who are into more advanced maths will recognize things like rounding and you got a trigonometric and then you get conversions over here. So if you wanna to go um, to like radians or degrees, um, you can use those, but that's not stuff we're gonna get into straight away for now. Um, we're just looking at kind of these things we're all familiar with and uh, most of you would already kind of know how these things work. So let's look at some cool ways we could use this now in a little example. So let's actually drag our group output up and let's just actually take our group input here, go shift D to duplicate it and just plug it in here. And let's just start fresh. So we'll leave this little system down here. It's a little network. Let's make a new one. So let's say for example, we wanna go shift A search and get a transform geometry, place it over here. And then we're gonna go shift A search and get a join and get a join geometry. And now let's duplicate this transform, plug in this geometry over here, and then plug the geometry into the join, and then plug this bottom one into the join as well. 
and then have this geometry join output go into group output. So now we have two of these donuts, but they're stacked right on top of each other. So what we could do is we can come here and grab the scale on one of these and drag it and just type in value to get a value node. And we can take the same value and drag it into the scale of the bottom one. So if we actually scale, they're both gonna scale exactly the same. But what if we wanted one to be a little bit smaller while we're scaling? So this is where we can go shift a search, get a math, grab that math and place it maybe on the bottom one. And now we can say, let's, um, let's multiply that by 0.5. So it's gonna be half the size. Right, we can even take this and and mess around with it a little bit till it fits just perfectly in there. So now if we grab this one slider over here, we can actually scale both of these transform geometries, but this one in the bottom will always have this offset because we have this math node taking whatever number we have here, multiplying it by this value, allowing it to be always a little bit smaller than the top transform here. So now doing this, we can actually go and, for example, let's take this transform geometry, shift D to duplicate, make another one, and let's plug this value into the scale. Let's plug this geometry into the join. And now let's um, go shift D to duplicate this multiply, and let's make another one, and let's multiply it by an even smaller and it's not working at the moment because we just need to grab our group input and make sure to plug it into the geometry here as well. So now if we grab this one, we can make it, for example, um, a little bit smaller as well. So now we only have this one value slider that we have to mess with and all of these rings will kind of um, have their own size relative to this value because we are feeding it into these math nodes. So that's another example of how we can use a setup like this and uh, it's really cool. Um, yeah, so those are kind of like the basic concepts of math nodes. Uh, you can take values or integers and you can combine them, multiply them, subtract from each other to get uh, different results. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys can now apply this. So we will be looking at the indexes in the next um, part. And uh, that's gonna be really handy for all sorts of things like selecting things more specifically. Like if you wanted to isolate a specific face, or put an instance on a very specific place, that's where the indexing is gonna be um, really handy.